Well, joining me now to talk more about the online dating industry is Julie Spira. She's an online dating expert and the founder of cyberdatingexpert.com. Welcome, Julie. Hi, Rochelle. So give us an idea. How have perceptions about online dating changed compared to when these sites first launched? The great news is the stigma is really gone for online dating. And when I first started 25 years ago, this is my 25th year in the business, you didn't tell people you were dating online. It was sort of a little silent secret. Now everybody seems to be swiping or looking for love with 70% of singles, according to Match, actually looking for a meaningful relationship. And why do you think that changed? Why do you think that stigma started to just kind of seep away? I think what's happened is that we've had this love affair with our mobile phones. And the more attached we are to our mobile phones, whether it's for finding love, ordering flowers for Valentine's Day, uh, getting your hair done, uh, making dinner reservations you know, on a mobile app, we're spending a lot of time on social media, on Facebook, and we're spending a lot of time on our mobile phones. So it's about time sort of the intersection of love and technology merge so people can feel comfortable finding somebody close by. Now let's look at the so-called mother of matchmaking, the Match Group. How do companies like Match stay in business, considering the goal is to match people long-term and essentially have them leave the site? You know, one of the biggest challenges we have in the industry is if we do a good job, they leave, and if we do a bad job, they leave. So what I've really seen, especially in this last calendar year, is such a rush to people for people to use these premium sites premium features actually. So what happens is you join a dating site for free and then perhaps you know you want to be seen a little bit more than someone else. For several dollars more you can actually be at the top of the line for a boost feature which you'll see on most of the sites. Match has one, OkCupid, Bumble and Tinder. And so it's these premium features that will help people actually make better matches and date more quickly. Now, how much would you say the options for online dating have changed over the years? I mean, it has become such a huge digital marketplace. So we now have, you know, big players like Match, and Match is doing an amazing job. Uh, they, they do own OkCupid and Plenty of Fish and several other sites. But what's happened is there are also niche sites. And some of these niche sites, maybe they'll match you up with your pet. Maybe they'll match you up with somebody that you're politically compatible with. Or maybe they'll match you up with somebody that has the same vegetarian dietary habits that you have. So there are so many different options. And what I'm seeing is that people are joining more on the average of three sites at a time instead of just one. Now, at the end of the day, these matchmaking sites are a business. So to what degree is this industry really sincere about helping people find companionship versus keeping you on as a paying subscriber? I, I can only tell you, because I've met the CEOs of all the top sites and I've been to their headquarters, those of us in the love business, especially on the site level, they love what they do for a living. So when you're in this love industry, it's a choice. And they love seeing these happy success stories. And of course, word of mouth. If your next door neighbor met somebody on match and fell in love and got engaged, perhaps that can happen for you as well. Now, what about overseas? How do you see the industry growing and developing in countries like China? Well, China, to me, is an enormous market. And you've got you know, an enormous amount of people that are using mobile phones for just about everything in China as well. So I see the two markets really concurrently with their own sites and apps doing um, an excellent job. Again, in China, we're looking at so many people that have matrimony on their minds. So it's very easy to go online and find someone, you know, from the use of your mobile app that's in a location that's close to yourself. So dating is flourishing in China concurrently with the way it is in the United States. Now, research also shows that money troubles tend to top the reasons why relationships fall apart. Talk about the role of income and finances when it comes to online dating. Well, I think finances do play a key role when it comes to any type of relationship. Uh, certain sites, actually, you can state what your income bracket is. I know, like I said, on Match, you can state whether you make 150000 more or you make zero to 25000 or you can leave that option blank. But at the end of the day, people want to be with someone that's healthy physically, medically, and, of course, financially. And we're also seeing fewer millennials choosing to get married. So how are dating sites and apps adapting to that? It's very interesting because the millennials are swiping, but they're really not meeting as often. And it's a big question of why are they going out in groups and why are they hanging out on the apps? So we're not seeing marriage on the minds of millennials these days. 
they, again, they're building their careers and they're hanging out with friends. Nothing wrong with that. Thanks so much, Julie Spira there, founder of cyberdatingexpert.com.